that when we come out of this, because the federal government and the Federal Reserve are backstopping the economy, uh, I worry about long-term effects of this in, in terms of the incentives or the expectations. Is it that the federal government is always there to obviate anybody's loss, to back up any business, um, to, uh, you know, how, how big would the government be in that circumstance? And would we ever have the willingness or ability to pay the taxes for that? So I'm, I guess when I worry about the people have called this like a, an induced coma. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm worried about uh, the incentives of what we're doing now and how that affects how we'll be able to come out of that coma in a way that we'll be able to resume a strong economy. So do you see any long-term negative effects to this, even though they may be inevitable right now, but, but what should we be thinking about in terms of coming out of this uh, induced coma? Well, I think, I think the long-term effects you're talking about, Bob, were there even before uh, we went into this, what you're calling a coma, right? Uh, the, the cost of this type of fiscal policy is, is eating away at our ability to function uh, as, as a strong economy. And let me give just a couple of examples. I, I mentioned one already, which is the fact that, uh, that our spending policies uh, are no longer oriented toward uh, uh, investment in people, uh, working in people, uh, uh, children. And by that, I'm talking about the growth. If you look at the growth in spending, for instance, we have a study coming out this week uh, uh, looking at the president's budget. The CBO did an analysis of this in early March, but it's based on a pre-pandemic uh, uh, analysis. But as we look through the numbers, we looked out 11 years from now, and the president proposed a budget in which close to half of all the spending increases would go for Social Security. Uh, and over 100% of all the spending increases would go for Social Security Medicare and interest on the debt. Everything else goes into tailspin. That's not investing in ourselves as a people. Now, this is not a statement against Social Security and Medicare. I think we should have an extremely strong Social Security and Medicare system, but I think we can't forget the rest of government or the rest of the population uh, when we're trying to invest in the future. That's where all the growth goes. It's not where all the dollars go, but it's all the growth goes to those items alone. Another example is that uh, uh, this very strong uh, fiscal stimulus we've had for some time, as well as monetary policy, has created a situation where interest rates are close to zero and wealth values in this country are extraordinarily high. So when you see things like very high housing values in places like New York and San Francisco, it's not just a matter of those being places to live. Housing values are high across the country. It's much harder for young people to buy into housing. And if you look at the wealth of the younger populations, it hasn't grown at all now for a couple generations, whereas the uh, uh, the wealth, quite bluntly, Bob, of people your age and my age has, has has increased quite substantially. That's not good for the for those people, but it's not also good for the economy. They're they're the dynamic forces working uh, well into the future. So there are a lot of these effects that are that are sometimes called micro rather than macro effects. In the sense we're talking about how it's affecting individual by individual as opposed to just the total amount of money out there. And I think, I think they're, quite, they're, they're quite severe. I, I had a third one, which is work I've done on going all the way back to the inflationary period back in the 1970s is, is when interest rates, particularly after tax, after inflation interest rates start getting to zero and negative, there's a lot of free money floating out there and it's not financing increased investment and productive activity. It's financing people who can play games with the money, you know, however they do it, whether it's through a private equity firm or just borrowing individually and, and taking a chance on buying stuff. And as long as that market keeps getting propped up by the Fed and by larger deficits, you know, people ride free on, on that type of market. But that means our, the money, the investment we have in the economy is not going to or as much productive investment as it should is going for a lot of, a lot of games that are being played out there. So well, I think these, are, these effects are all quite severe, I think, on the economy. And they say they were there before this, this recession. We had a lot more debt to the system, a lot more bond buying by the Fed. 
as much as it was required, the fact that it's added to that existing system that's already in place is where the danger uh, comes uh, uh, or is, is, is multiplied up by, by the current recession.